Yaron Lanier is not your average computer scientist. He rose to prominence in the 80s for his pioneering work on virtual reality. Today, the serial entrepreneur and partner architect at Microsoft is raising questions about how the internet and the businesses that depend on it are evolving. In his latest book, he argues that our obsession with free content and information is bad for consumers and businesses alike, and a new model is needed. Lanyard points to the music industry and its struggle with the online revolution as an omen of things to come. We caught up with him in London's Denmark Street. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, and what does the digitization of the music industry teach us about the way technology businesses use the web? Well, the music business was one of the first industries that was intentionally uh, transformed by digital idealists. And I was one of them. I was one of the people who really thought up the scheme in the first place. And the idea was that we'd make the information free, the music free, and then uh, musicians would earn their living through playing live gigs or merchandising and all that sort of thing. And then there'd be more information that would get around for the benefit of everybody. That, that's the basic open ideal. And now enough has happened that we can see the results. And the results uh, are mixed. You know, um, I think that idealists like to point to new success stories, and there are a few, but they have a tokenism quality. They're, they're sort of like the old Horatio Alger stories. What actually happens is a very small number of people find success uh, as musicians, and uh, the vast middle class that used to be employed by the music industry is no more. Uh, the, the, the world of people who were involved in the selling of music, the world of studio musicians, that whole world is just gone. And the volume of the sales of the music itself um, you know, halved at least, and it's maybe more like a third or a quarter, in fact. Um, now, what we can learn from that is that a certain kind of digital efficiency does help us as entrepreneurs build businesses, but overall it also shrinks markets. And so if your own success is dependent on shrinking markets overall, ultimately that'll come back and bite you. It's not a sustainable idea for business in the long term. And this is a hard lesson to learn. I mean, like a, it, it came as rough news to me because I was a true believer at the start. The, the twin of the music business, oddly enough, is finance. What they have in common is that you have um, an open system where a lot of people have access to information, but a certain business has essentially the biggest computer on it and is able to calculate the most about that information. So in the case of the music business, uh, it's uh, the, the, the big Silicon Valley servers, the, the Facebooks and the Googles have that role. In the case of finance, it was the, the, the aggregators, not of music, but of mortgages who had that role. And when you have the, the biggest computer on a network, you get this idea that you can calculate, in a way, a sort of an ideal business proposition where you demonetize a lot of people's positions and what that really means is radiating the risk of doing business outward from yourself. You sort of try to calculate the perfect business. And the problem with that is that the society at large, the economy at large, can't sustain the radiated risk and ultimately it fails. And so I think both what we've seen in the financial markets and what we've seen in the music markets reflect a style of using computing that isn't sustainable, which is to try to radiate risk away from whoever has the biggest computer. <laughs> and a better way to do things is to monetize more and more information as technology advances instead of less and less. So uh, that way the markets can expand, the economy can grow as technology improves, and risk is distributed honestly. And I think it's a better plan for business. I think it'll make us all, all do better, including the biggest entrepreneurs. So when we talk about people who run businesses then, or business mm -hmm. leaders, I suppose, how does that shift in thinking? What are the things they need to be thinking about? So they need to be thinking about the changing model, but do they need to be then paying people for access to their data, their information? Well, I think that to go to any player in the system, whether it's uh, a financial scheme that currently gets data either for free or, for, or very cheaply, or um, a pirate party member who wants to be able to download music, um, to just tell them, oh no, you have to start to pay, it creates a sort of, um, I think, an, uh, an untenable uh, kind of a transaction where you're sort of waving your finger and saying, no, 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 you must do something differently. I think the better way is for people to have better ways to earn, and in that case, 
when they understand paying as part of a system in which they're also earning, the, the bargain will look very different, and then I think they'll be interested. So this kind of, there's like a notion that somehow consumers are part of the process, or individuals are, but yeah. actually you would argue they're, they're much less so because of the free thing. Uh, to the to the, uh, the runner of a large finance scheme or to the runner of a large Silicon Valley company, what I'd say is, right now our schemes are based on milking value out of tree-shaped connections of people where we're at the root, and that might seem like the best possible scheme, but if we had a, full, a, a thickly connected graph, the volume of information moving in the graph would be much greater. And as a participant in that, our opportunities for growth and for profit would also be much greater. And um, I, there's also an important point to make about openness and, and uh, rights. Right now, when we walk around the streets of London, we're being watched by cameras, and we don't know exactly how much of that information is being analyzed or how. If the information costs money, then accountants will track how it's used because debts will be created. Uh, I don't believe that either financiers or entrepreneurs or governments should be able to have access to information for free because they get an unfair advantage if they happen to have the largest computers, which they do. The government should have to pay for information like anybody else. And if commerce is brought into the picture, then you have a degree of moderation on how information is used. If information costs money, then the more we enter a high-tech society, the more automation there is, the more wealth there will be. Uh, the more we can have a naturally occurring middle class, the more we can have a sustainable society. If we demonetize information, then the more automation there is and the more high-tech things become, the less stability we'll have, the more people there will be in need and so forth, the more people will be left behind. Yaron yeah, Lina, thanks very much. Certainly, thank you. Yes, thank you.